Welcome to Bamford Rose. We're in the workshop with a 2007 4.3 V8 Vantage. Uh, this particular car, as you can see from the Odo reading, has got close on 186,000 miles on the clocks. This car has been uh, well used and enjoyed. It's at Bamford Rose for what we call a rebirthing. Uh, this car is going to get completely rebuilt, uh, but not back to standard upgraded with every single component that we offer. Uh, this car will end up being um, engine power, braking, dynamics as good as any uh, AMR last evolution uh, V8 Vantage that rolled off the production line. Uh, so let's just have a walk around the car and we'll show you what we're going to do with it. Okay, so we'll start with the mechanicals. So the engine, uh, this is a 4.3 V8 Vantage. This is going to be rebuilt to 4.7 and how we build GT4 engines. So this is going to have uh, steel forged connecting rods. It's going to have uh, blue printed cylinder heads, compression ratio optimized, inlet and exhaust porting done. With our exhaust manifolds and catalysts on, this car is going to produce in the region of 525 bhp. So that's drive in 380, this car is completely standard, drive out about 525. It's an epic transformation. Uh, the power to weight ratio of this car is going to be greater than a V12 Vantage uh, with the lighter weight of the V8 that gives a much more uh, unwieldy drive compared to the V12, the V8 has got much more finesse, more poised in the corners. Uh, with this power to rate ratio, this will outperform a V12 Vantage. Uh, it's going to have our lightweight flywheel and twin plate clutch. And now we'll move on to the suspension and driving dynamics upgrades. So it's going to have the big brake upgrade. It's going to go from 350 millimeter disc to 380 millimeter twin piece as on Vantage S, uh, four piston to six piston calipers. And it's going to go from the fixed uh, Multimatic damper. Obviously, the early cars don't handle great, uh, but everyone knows that when Aston upgraded to Bill Stein on 4.7, more or less 2009, 2010, the handling was transformed. Uh, this is going to have build time, but it's going to be our electronic switching, stiff and soft system. So together with those upgrades, and especially considering this car has got 186K nearly on the clock, uh, the rebirthing is going to include all new wheel bearings, all new upper and lower wishbone arms, suspension uprights, uh, this car really is going to get uh, reborn uh, with all new running gear uh, together with the upgrades. Not just that, a complete bodywork uh, rejuvenation. M400 side sills and a complete car wide respray. Uh, back in the same colour, which uh, is a really nice colour for, for, for V8, this red. Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week it's, I've got a 4.3 V8. Is it worthwhile eyeing up a pretty intensive, expensive project on it to transform, evolve that car into something really, really special? Or is it better to sell that car, move on and perhaps trade up V12 Vantage, DBS or whatever other Aston you'd got your eye on? So let's talk about that question. Some owners just want to pep up the engine performance a little bit and the only mod the car will have will be the exhaust manifolds and cats. It's something that you spend the money on, enjoy the upgrade and perhaps in a few years you part company with the car and that's the amount of money it took to evolve the car to make it interesting during your ownership. Sometimes it's not an engine performance increase that someone needs, it's a suspension evolution. The crashy yet body roll ride that the dynamic stampers give. Someone evolves to Bilstein and gets a much more composed cabin. Don't do any brake upgrades because they don't need it and don't do any engine performance upgrades because the performance of the car is adequate as it is. Then we have a good few customers that each annual service, they'll just go for one little upgrade more. Maybe the first year it was exhaust manifolds and catalysts. Next year it would be the Bilstein suspension. And following year it would be the big brake upgrade kit. That's a really nice way of upgrading. It spreads the cost over several years. And each visit you get to enjoy the upgrade the improvement that each individual aspect of the car gave. I get asked lots 
about a 4.3 to 4.7 conversion. All the modifications we spoke about previously, you know, fairly bolt on, fairly unintrusive and relatively quite low cost. 4.3 to 4.7 conversion needs engine removal from the car, complete strip of the engine, some pretty expensive parts, some pretty expensive engineering works and stitch it all back together again. The all up price of that activity is obviously going to be rather high. The 4.3 to 4.7 conversion really does need exhaust manifolds and catalyst and lightweight flywheel and twin plate clutch. Put the big brake kit on and you're not gonna be short too much of 30,000 pounds for that evolution. Let's just say the market value for a particular 4.3 was 30,000 pounds. That's an all up cost of 60,000 pounds which is a shade short of what a V12 Vantage can be bagged at and is probably you know, 15, 18K more expensive than what you could get into the seat for a V8 Vantage S at. So in my opinion, engine rebuilding from 4.3 to 4.7 should only occur, be advised for two reasons. One would be that the 4.3 engine has gone wrong and it needs significant repair and rebuild and if you've got it out to do significant repair and if you have to buy some pistons anyway then why not buy eight 4.7 pistons the 4.7 crankshaft and rebuild that engine as a 4.7 it's going to be pretty much cost neutral to rebuilding it to a 4.3 if it wasn't for repair then the only other way I would advise a 4.3 to 4.7 conversion is because perhaps you're the first owner of that V8 Vantage, you know, perhaps you bought it in 2005, you've lived with it now for 16 years, it's a part of the family and you know the looks of the modern stuff doesn't really grab you and you're still really in love with the car that you have. So instead of sinking a load of cash into a trade up, which is also going to have depreciation uh, affecting that car's value, uh, adding to what the total all up price in reality is, then investing in your 4.3 to make it something fundamentally better than the car you could have traded up to, now comes into relevance. It's surprising over the last few years just how many owners have gone down this road, but that's because they're totally in love with their car and just cannot part with it. If you weren't totally in love with your car, then instead of sinking a serious pot of cash into it to evolve it, then you would be better off getting the Vantage S or a V12 Vantage in a trade-in. But if you can't part company with your good old friend, then here is what you could do with it. This Toro Red V8 Vantage had been this owner's car from new, and since 2005, he's covered 185,000 miles in the car. That means that this car's market value would be something around £20,000. And with an upgrade project in the region of £50,000, the all-up spend in reality is £70,000. The upgrade was a complete respray in Toro Red. And this car had suffered so much of your Aston paint corrosion blistering that the whole car had to be taken back to bare and respray from fresh. Interior was lifted with the sill kick plates and door handles, painted piano black and then wrapped in protective film. The engine is the Bamford Rose GT4 4.7 build, so the 4.3 engine was stripped converted to a 4.7 and then has our exhaust manifolds and catalyst bolted to it and power output is very close in the region of 500 bhp. We have a lightweight flywheel, a twin plate clutch, we have the Vantage S big front brakes, two piece bell, six piston caliper and we have the Bilsteins and that's our own electronic switchable suspension system, a wheel refurbishment upgrade to Michelin Pilot Sport tyres, clear rear lights, a Vantage S exhaust silencer back box to give it the most awesome exhaust note possible, and a complete re-greening exercise. So this would be producing the car off our ramp as if it were brand new. So we've got four lower suspension arms, four upper suspension arms, four wheel bearings, new radiator, new aircon condenser, compressor, new transmission oil cooler, new pipe work, rear subframe restoration, basically a complete nut and bolt restoration.
if the part didn't look new or it wasn't new, then it didn't make the rebuild. The result is a car with power just a slither away from V12 Vantage, and it has the finesse and handling precision that only the V8 does have. Anyone who's driven a car modified by us to this standard knows just how competent this car is. And reborn now in better condition than when it was born at the production line at the factory for the first time, surely means that this car is good for another 15 years or 185,000 miles. So now the car has been renewed and the owner can continue growing old with his old friend. When the car was new, it was £90,000. The 4.3 engine produced 380 brake horsepower. The brakes were four piston caliper and reached fade any time you stamped on the pedal with any sort of force. The ride was crashy. Yeah, there was a lot of body roll, a bit unprecise turn in. But now for the investment of around about £50,000, he's got a much, much better car than ever came off the production line. Originally, he paid £90,000 for. We'll play out the video with a few pictures captured during the process of the upgrade of this particular car. And just finish off by concluding the answer to this week's particular question of the week, which is, should you convert your 4.3 to a 4.7? Well, doing that is the first step stone in a few other follow-on modifications, which means the all-up cost is gonna to start to get pretty high. If that's the upgrade and ownership path that you want to go down, then that's absolutely fine because you can end up with a project like this one. But you do that because you're in love with the car and you wanna keep it for the future. If you're not totally in love with the car and think that one day, maybe in the short term, you might part company with it, then it definitely is not worth considering a 4.3 rebuild to a 4.7 and only do that if you have to repair a situation where the engine is a complete loss. Hope you liked this week's question of the week. Always helps us if you can subscribe to our channel. Click us a like and we'd be interested to hear your comments. Enjoy the time lapse of this particular project and we'll see you on the next question of the week. Thank you.